Hey everybody, Jose with Raiden Photos, back at it again with another Photoshop tutorial. And uh, this one is going to be about creating depth in a photo, which is one of the most important aspects of, of photography in general, because it creates interest, like it pulls you into the subject and makes you focus on the specific thing in the photo that uh, the photographer wanted you to focus on in the first place. So uh, it's also a really important aspect in retouching. If the photo itself has, you know, a great composition and just, you know, looks great, but it kind of has this, like, flat feel to it. Like right now, the, the colors and contrast and pretty much everything other than the focus is kind of flat. So uh, the focus is the only thing drawing, drawing us into the subject, but it's not going to keep our eyes there for long if there isn't more interest in the photo. And... The three ways of adding that in are focus, which is already done, contrast, which we don't have a lot of in the photo because we needed to get rid of a little bit of it to do our frequency separation, which we finished in that last video, and color, which comes later. So, uh, moving on to the middle, which is adding contrast to create depth, which is what we're going to do right now with a little bit of dodge and burn. Um, first thing you want to do is you want to add a new layer. Shift backspace to uh, to open the fill dialog. Add a 50% gray for the contents. Leave everything else normal and 100% transparency. Should be good there. And boom, you should have this medium gray fill over your entire layer. Now, make sure this layer is still selected and uh, choose soft light for the blend mode, that way it disappears. Can't see it anymore, which is good. Uh, make sure that if that is still selected, that blue kind of square around there, that you uh, hit enter on your keyboard to make sure it's deselected, that way you can actually draw on your photo. Uh, so we have soft light, we're gonna name this DB, or dodge and burn, however you wanna rename it. And now we're going to try to create depth in the photo. And what I mean by depth is give it this 3D feel. The closer something is to the camera and the more like focus you want on it or the more, uh, how do I say this? Like You're creating shape with lights and darks, and that's what Dodge and Burn is for. So in order to make her stand out from the photo, you want darks around the edges or near the back of things, or shadows that are already there, you can kind of fill them in and make them a little bit, uh, make them stand out a little more. And the lights and highlights, you kind of shape with lights and darks. You can actually also like thin people in a little bit, or or, or make them wider. If it's a, a photo of a guy, you can make him sh shoulders and chest look a little bit broader, depending on how you shape it with the light. So. That's what we're going to do right now. We're going to shape her face and uh, her hair and anything we want focused on with lights and darks on the dodge and burn layer. So first thing I want to do is I want to switch to my brush tool. I, uh, first things you want to check are make sure your flow is at 100%. I know that sounds weird, but we're going to actually change our opacity to use a little trick that I learned recently which is uh, if you hit the number keys on your keyboard, you're actually changing the opacity of your brush. So if you hit uh, one, you get 10%, two, you get 20%, three, you get 30%. If you want smaller, you hit zero first, so zero, five, we get 5%, and that's exactly what we want right now. So 5% opacity, 100% flow. And the reason why I want to do that is I'm actually going to tap, I'm going to tap the, uh, the lights and darks into the photo and that's going to give me a bit of a a good transition between the lights and the darks so we're going to start with the highlights real quick and i'll show you what i mean so the highlight on the forehead where the light's hitting right here i want to start out with a large brush and shrink the brush as i tap uh, so if you're using a mouse you're clicking and this should work about the same as a uh as a like a Wacom tablet, uh, you're not doing anything really different because you're not you're not brushing it on. 
like you would with flow, you're tapping it in. So this will work just as good with a mouse if you're ever just doing a little bit of quick dodge and burn. All right, so we start out with a large brush and we tap, shrink, tap, shrink, tap, shrink, tap. And it's not like a super noticeable thing that you're doing here. You can also do multiple taps, you know what I mean? But uh, one of the rules you want to follow with uh, retouching in general is you want to keep everything as subtle as possible. If you can see the change right away as soon as you're, you know, drawing it in, it might be a little too much and you're going to end up having to pull it back later. So might as well make it as subtle as possible. You know exactly what you're changing in your photo and you're going to see it later when you do a quick before and after. So try not to uh, go too wild with this. You can do it once or twice tops. But uh, you can do a couple little double taps between shrinks too and do a little faster like this. So we're going to start out with the large brush and little swipes as I shrink. Bam. Now we're going to start out a little smaller for the bridge of the nose. If you want to kind of get a guide for where to dodge and burn on the face, you can look up things like contouring makeup tutorials because they do the exact same thing with uh, light colors and dark colors in order to kind of dodge and burn on the face. So uh, contouring tutorials on YouTube or anywhere else. Uh, you can also find it on Google Images. Just type in contouring guide or contouring makeup guide on Google and you'll find exactly what you need. So start out with a little small one like this and you're going to shrink it down. You're going to find it good right here on the cheek. Where the light lands is a good spot. Large brush, shrink down to a small brush and it gives you a nice natural highlight. Good, and the chin. Good. It's already starting to take a little bit of shape here. Shaping according to where the light is already hitting. Gives her a little bit more depth. Tend to hum random things as I edit, so don't mind me too much. And again, always start out with a large, larger than what you need brush. And shrink down. It's a nice way to feather it in there, so you're not gonna gonna go overboard, and it's not gonna show since you're at five percent. So if you go a little bit outside the lines, it's okay. Uh, collarbone. Shape that in there. A little bit down the side of her neck here. Good. And I think we're good here. Maybe a little shape her arm a little. All right, let's get into the burn, the darkening of the photo. And remember, you're using a brush tool with the default colors. If you hit D on your keyboard, get this black and white right here. You can hit X to switch between the two. So we're going to choose black. Make sure black is your primary color. You're at, still at 5% with 100% flow. Make sure you're on your dodge and burn layer. And again, in order for to have like a nice little guide as to where to dodge and burn, look up contouring tutorials or a contouring guide on uh, Google Images. Gonna start out with a large brush, just like I said before. Down. Highlights. I mean, to make the, the shadows more natural and a little less exaggerated. Blend in a little bit better. Of the chin, darken this in. 
further back behind her neck. What I tend to do with the shadows is uh, the further away from the camera it is, or more, more tucked away somewhere it is, the more I want to shade it in order to give the picture more depth. Things closer to the camera tend to get more light on them. If it has depth to it, you want to add more depth. So like right here, this fold of the hair is above this part. So I want to darken it in. And that gives it a, a more 3D look. You can also make a separate layer to do the hair, because sometimes you know you you want to do some fine tuning and you don't want to affect the rest of the photo and you want to be able to change uh the opacity of the two layers. Right now I'm just doing this quick so I'm not going to go into that much detail. You definitely want to make sure everything's meshing together right when you're doing this uh, for a client. So that's the key. And for curls like this in the hair, I like to uh, burn the sides, and dodge the middle. And that gives it more of a curved shape. See what I mean in a second? It's kind of hard to tell right now. It almost looks like I'm not really doing anything to it. Do more burn right here. And I'm going to do the same thing with a little before and after here. Give it more of a 3D feel. Let's get um, some sides. Subtle little changes like this kind of affect how you perceive the image, so it's uh, always good. Go. If you ever feel like you did a little bit too much, you can also. Ooh, looks like I selected a different color at some point. <laughs> so, um, if you ever feel like you did a little bit too much, you can go in here by holding Alt and clicking the I to uh, make just this layer visible. And you can select this medium gray color and just change it to uh, 20% and change the flow a little bit. This is going to be kind of like your eraser. Go to 25%, and then you can just go right on in here. And whoop! And it's gone. This. Random colors that I added in. <laughs> All right, and then you can flip this right back to normal.
it's our default colors again. <laughs> Back. Bam, and opacity five. Further away it is, likely you are going to end up adding a little bit of a burn to it. That should be good. And the next thing I like to do is. Uh, blur this layer a little bit to make the edges a little less defined. So we're going to go to Filter, Blur, uh, go back, Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And then we're just going to add uh, like 8. Add eight to the blur. Actually, you know what? We're gonna add a little bit more. F. Or we can go right back in here. Blur, Gaussian blur. Give it. Go exaggerate it a little bit. There we go. Go with that. And that softens it up a little bit so it's not super, super obvious or sharp. And you can also turn the opacity down a little bit. Probably like 90 or 80s. Should be good. It's a lot better. So here's the before and after. A little bit more depth, a little more focus on the subject. And then you're wondering, like, uh, it's still missing a little bit of contrast, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, we're going to stop here. So that's your dodge and burn. Remember to look up some contouring guides on Google Images or uh, YouTube for because makeup artists probably give you the best advice on dodging and burning. Uh, probably better advice than half the dodge and burn tutorials out there. So make sure you look those up. That should give you a good idea of where and when to dodge and burn. And you'll get a little bit of a result like this. And where you really, really see this shine is when we move on to the next step, which is creating depth through sharp, a little bit of sharpening and color. So see you guys in the next video.